I just did extensive research. Anybody who told you that they was watching Harry Simon fight here in America back in the late 90s, early 2000s, they're lying through their teeth. In fact, I was able to find threads from 2007 with concerned fight fans asking why they are not showing Harry Simon in America. I overlooked these threads in 2007. I was on these boxing websites. I remember Harry Simon. This is how I remember Harry Simon. Harry Simon defeated Winky Wright. Winky Wright is from Florida. He's from right where I'm from. I remember Winky Wright in the 90s. I used to go watch Winky Wright fight. I watch Antonio Tarver, Roy Jones, and Jeff Lacey. I used to go watch those guys fight live. I knew that Winky Wright was going to South Africa to have a fight, but it wasn't being aired on um, HBO. They didn't hear the fight. They didn't pick it up. So anybody who's from America who tells you that bullshit lie that they saw that fight, they didn't see that fight, they didn't hear it that night here in America. I don't know what happened over in England. I don't know if they were showing Harry Simon. I'm going to ask Beats, though. I'm going to ask him if they featured Harry Simon in England. Because they featured the Wayne Alexander fight and the um, Cranch fight. Those fights were on low-level networks. They were on low-level networks. So after he defeated Winky Wright, all I knew is that Winky Wright had went to Africa and he had lost. I heard that they had said it was a draw. Okay, so he goes back to the um, fitting room with his belt and then they came back there and they got the belt from him and they informed him that a mistake had been made and that Harry Simon had actually won the belt. It was a good fight, you know, I told the people it was going to be a good fight. I could have did a lot better, but I won, you know. I at least thought I won, but it was a good fight. And he was throwing a lot of low blows, you know. I thought they were going to at least take a point. He'll, he'll throw a straight right, right to the uh, I'm looking at the belt. He did at least six, seven times. Okay. Just one and one and one and no, no, you know. Run the belt back, please. No, no, no. Run the belt. And what the ring with the belt? I know we're changing the decision. <laughs> they can't change the decision. I ain't going back out there. We're going to the hotel. Let's go. It was announced that a mistake had been made and that Harry Simon had in fact won the world title that Winky Wright had thought he had retained. After the fight, they will change the city. Yeah. Come on now. What you gonna do? How they gonna turn? I'm still, I'm still the champ. Oh no! You must relax now. You must relax now. You are the champion. You are the greatest. It was a controversial fight. And that's all I remember. I still had never seen um, Harry Simon fight until the internet, until the YouTube era. The YouTube era, when they started allowing us to share files, that changed everything. But that Harry Simon, Winky Wright fight wasn't shown on YouTube till years later after they um, re-showed, re-aired the um, broadcast, which was an African broadcast. They re-aired it in England or something like that. Then they uploaded it to YouTube. So that was a hard fight to find. So if anybody saw it back then, then hey, shit. <laughs> hey, that's better than I could do. In fact, I couldn't even distinguish that Harry Simon was from out of Namibia because I had missed all the footage on him. They didn't show him over here. The same machine that we're fighting against kept Harry Simon and other world champions away from us. He ain't the only champion that wasn't featured on TV. I'm going to do a whole video on it one day. If you go onto YouTube and you look these guys' fights up, you'll see what network they're on. You can could, you could see who's broadcasting the fight. Go to all the Harry Simon fights and see who's broadcasting the fights. They didn't show Harry Simon on a big scale. A fighter that never lost in the ring. He beat Winky Wright. I watched the fight. It was a close fight. It was a rough fight. He was coming in there with a lot of um, body punches. And Winky Wright was complaining that they was low. That's a fight that could be revisited. Since you guys always want to talk about low blows. And what's a low blow and what's not a low blow. Well, Winky Wright 
says that he was being low blow that night. Regardless, Harry Simon was able to defeat Winky Rock. So that just shows you right there that they have world-class talent coming out of Namibia in Harry Simon. I did not distinguish that he was from Namibia until Dan the Man Boxing mentioned it. I was looking at a video from Dan the Man Boxing, a very good channel, a channel that's loaded with lots of um, historical data, Dan the Man Boxing. I was watching him and he was the one who was like, well, um, you know, Harry Simon. And then when he said that, I was like, oh, Harry Simon, the guy who beat Winky Wright. Oh, yeah. I had actually watched that Winky Wright fight probably like two or three years ago or something like that. And, um, you know, they're talking about Namibia there, but I just didn't connect it. And um, when Julius Ndongo came up, yeah, I was just remembering Harry Simon as a fighter from Africa. So, Dan the Man, thanks a lot for pointing that out. Hey, we can't know everything about these fighters. We learn stuff from listening to other people. All I can say is that Namibia has produced talent in the past. Talent that was overlooked. The machine always fails to alert us of the fights that's relevant or the fighters who have potential. They downplay fighters and things like that. Now look, Harry Simon, I went on, I did the research, I looked and I seen that he had a couple of car accidents, he's had some misfortunes outside of the ring. I'm not sure what he's going through right now, but I can see a great fighter. When I look at his fights and what I see on YouTube, unfortunately I didn't get a chance to see it because they weren't featuring him on major TV. Anybody who tells you from America that they saw Harry Simon during all that time period in the early 2000s and late 90s, if they were seeing him, they had some kind of special satellite or some shit that got um, networks from overseas and shit like that. They'd be lying through their teeth, man. What we have to do is we have to make sure that we know who these people are, man. Boxing is a global sport. We have the access now to know who all these fighters are. We can know who they are just by looking them up on the internet. It's not like it used to be. In 2002, I didn't have social media. Social media was around at the time, but there was no sharing of files in the same fashion that there is now. I just wanna say, let's not sleep on Julius Ndongo. I'm going to do a tribute video to Harry Simon once I get some more information on him. I'll speak to people who know more about this because if I have a direct source, then why go to the internet? There's limited information, but we'll get Harry Simon a tribute video, man. They didn't uh, feature him over here. I could tell you guys this right now and I'll always be honest with you. That's one thing about blood boxing. I'll tell you the truth. I don't trust the media. I don't like the way they have portrayed Harry Simon. From what I have seen in the last few days that I've really been looking into it, they have the tendency to paint people the wrong way. So I will find out the truth. I will do a tribute video. I will cover his career. I will let you know who he fought, what their accomplishments was. We will look into this deeper. I can tell you this, after watching the fight, between Harris Simon and Winky Wright, Harris Simon beat him. He beat him, man. He just outworked him. He outworked Winky Wright, man. I'm not sitting up here complaining about low blows and all of that. And I'm right here from Florida. Winky Wright lost that night. He was outworked. You could go watch the video for yourself. He was outworked that night, man. I mean, I know we didn't have YouTube back then. And if we did, I'm Sure, maybe there might have been some people who might have complained about it, but from what I can remember, fight fans back then didn't make a big deal out of it. We heard Winky Wright lost. He felt that he got hit with some fouls. Um, you know, that was his opinion on it, you know, and, um, and shit, the way I look at it, he just got beat that night, man. That's the way I look at it. I'm out of here. He was known as the Terminator. And just hours after we filmed with him in November of 2002, 
Tragically, three people lay dead. This is the story of former boxing world champion, Harry Simon. In 2002, perhaps because he was from the little known and sparsely populated country of Namibia, Harry Simon hadn't been given the chance to prove himself against a big star like Felix Trinidad or Bernard Hopkins. But Harry could certainly fight. When we met up with him, he was undefeated in 23 professional bouts and was the WBO middleweight world champion. He was coached by South African Ariel Maliki, a close friend who lived with him in his hometown of Walvis Bay on Namibia's skeleton coast. Harry grew up in the toughest of circumstances here. Twelve years ago, the then 30-year-old was well known for his bad boy reputation outside of the ring. Why is it now that I'm a world champion Things have to go tough with me now. You grow up the same as I grow up. People won't give you respect. They care what Harry have done. See, did Harry, was Harry in the club? Yeah, what did he do? No, he was drinking, so it's bad. Drinking is not bad. I'm not a small boy. I'm a grown up man, I can handle myself. Harry had been regularly making headlines in Namibia after nightclub brawls and run-ins with the authorities. He's my bodyguard. <laughs> he was also in a car crash 20 months prior to our visit in which two people died. Initial reports suggested that Harry was driving the car, but it had subsequently been established that an associate was at the wheel and Harry was only a passenger. However, the disappearance of blood samples taken after the crash to determine whether either of them was drunk at the time raised some suspicions in Namibia. There were allegations that a bribe had been paid to make the samples disappear. There's people driving here and people burning, whole microbuses burning and all 10, 10, 15 people dying in that car. Does they put it front page? No. See, just because of this little boy. Because of what? Of because of the money I got. And because I'm a world champion. That's why they say, man, what is the only thing we can do so that we can destroy Harry Simon? What am I? Am I Jesus? I'm not Jesus. See? So people are trying to destroy me, but uh, they, won't, they, won't, they won't get it right. Harry clearly felt that people in Namibia were jealous of what he'd achieved. And by 2002, he certainly had made something of his life from what were very unpromising beginnings. The youngest of seven children, Harry never knew his father. His mother died when he was four. Growing up, Harry was closest to his sister, Anna. He sold newspapers to bring in some money, and from a young age, he got caught up in street fights. Somebody found me fighting on the street with my friend and uh, he saw me beating up a, a 12 year old and I was like eight years old. And uh, he advised me, if I want to hit somebody for, for fun, then I have to go to the gym. The first day he gave me to spar with the, the guy who was like 14 years old and I was like nine years old. And uh, he was like a Namibian champion. And, uh, I beat him up in the gym, and we started from there. As a teenager, Harry found a job working in a diamond mine, but decided to give it up to pursue boxing full-time in South Africa. Life was very hard. He sometimes had to sleep in the gym because he couldn't afford a place to stay. But he was building a reputation on the tough South African boxing scene, and eventually started to earn enough money to look after his family back home. He's the best brother ever, ever, really, if we can tell the world that he is our best brother ever, he is the one. Really, he satisfies our, our lives. He is the father, he is the mother, he is the uncle of our kids. He's looking after the sister's kids and the brother's kids. He's looking about us as sisters and brothers. Home back home!
Members of Anna and Harry's family still lived in the home they grew up in, expanded and improved with his money. Coming back to this township was a reminder of all he'd achieved. And for the children there, Harry was the man. I really love the kids and uh, I feel a lot for them because I've been like them. Every time when I came here, I have a chat with them and I tell them uh, good stories and all that. So, yeah, I really, uh, I really feel the way they're growing and struggling and all this. Yeah, and I'm proud of them. Actually. And Harry was also proud of his escape from poverty. So proud that he even invited us into his bank to film him counting his money. This wasn't the sort of event that we usually filmed with a sportsman, but in the world he inhabited, Harry Simon was less sportsman, more celebrity. He was followed nearly everywhere by a gang of friends who acted as informal bodyguards, along with his trainer, Ariel. He grew up here and people seen him when he was a kid, I mean like when he was suffering. Today they see him driving, you know, whatever he can afford, you know. So people, they try to bring you down by the time, you know. They don't, you know, I mean like it's a only world champion ever have Namibia have produced uh, and a three times world champion. People, they don't see that. Only they see it's, um, his mistakes, you know. Basically everybody else do mistake, you know. Unfortunately for Harry, mistakes seem to mark his path. Just before we left him, we asked him about his plans for the future. He hoped for a middleweight unification bout against Bernard Hopkins and then win or lose to retire. But life wasn't going to turn out as smoothly as he planned. Me, I won't stop enjoying my life. I won't stop enjoying my life until death. I'm happy for who I am. I'm happy what God has given me. I'm happy to be a world champion. I'm happy to be on earth. I'm happy with my life. I'm going to just keep going and I am keep going strong. This was the last sequence that we filmed with Harry Simon as he posed in his new Mercedes just outside Walvis Bay. Then he left us and drove back into town. Just a few hours later, there was an accident on the same road. And Harry Simon's Mercedes was involved. Good evening, Namibia's WBO middleweight champion Harry Simon sustained serious injuries in a head-on collision last night which killed three people at Langstrand between Warpus Bay and Swakopmund. Simon, the Terminator, was airlifted to the Vincent Pilotti Clinic in Cape Town where he was expected to undergo surgery on his arm and leg today. His condition has been described as stable. It was reported that Harry was overtaking another vehicle when he crashed head-on into a white Nissan carrying seven Belgian tourists. Two of them, a man and his 22-month-old daughter, died at the scene, while a woman died in hospital. The other occupants of the vehicle were seriously injured. Harry suffered a broken left arm and leg and was taken to hospital. Andrew Iamba was the regional police commander overseeing the investigation. If somebody overtook on a blind race, on a two barrier lines, he overtook and he crashed into a stationary vehicle. So you can judge yourself. It's not me to, to say no, so and so is guilty or, or what, no. But that's what happened. And they, he hit the car, no? it was head on collision. Harry Simon was convinced that the Namibian media were out to get him, and from his hospital bed he declared his innocence, claiming that the Belgians turned across him and he couldn't avoid hitting their car. But this was a man who just couldn't seem to avoid trouble. You grow up the same as I grow up. People won't give you respect. What am I? Am I Jesus? I'm not Jesus. See? So people are trying to destroy me, but they won't get it right. In 2005, he was given a two-year jail sentence, but a lengthy appeal process saw him avoiding prison until 2007. Following his release, he launched a comeback and extended his professional record to 29 wins and no losses. 
Yet despite his undoubted talent, Harry Simon will remain known more for what he's done outside of the ring rather than in it. Also, don't forget to tune in August 19th, free on ESPN, Julius Ndongo will face Terrence Crawford for undisputed, two undefeated fighters. This is the first time in over a decade that we have had a fight of this magnitude. 